This video is about calculating angles using parallel lines and giving full geometric arguments and at the end we'll look at a bearings problem. Okay so I'm sure you know that parallel lines always stay the same distance apart. So if AD and BC are parallel, if it's 5.6 centimetres between them here, it will be 5.6 centimetres between them here or anywhere along the length where we measure them. Okay. So to mark AD and BC as parallel, we're going to put on matching arrows pointing in the same direction. Now, the main thing we're looking at in this video then is what happens with lines that cross parallel lines. So suppose this line here starts to cross these parallel lines. Well, whenever two lines cross, they always make two different angles. Okay, they make an acute angle and an obtuse angle. And I say two different angles because, of course, this angle over here is the same size as this one because they're vertically opposite. This angle here is the same as this one because they're vertically opposite. Now if we carry this transversal line on across the other parallel line, AD goes in exactly the same direction as BC, so the angles that get made are exactly the same angle. This green angle here is the same size as this one, this yellow angle here is the same size as this one, for example. So, for our geometric arguments, we need, uh, we need to be able to give reasons why these angles are the same size, okay? And there are a couple of different uh, reasons that we can give. So, for example, if this angle here is 60, this angle over here will also be 60. And so we want to be able to say that AGF and GFC are the same for some reason. Now, AGF is on one side of the transversal line and GFC is on the alternate side of the transversal line so we describe them as alternate angles. Now alternate angles we can spot because they always make a Z shape. Alternate angles are always found in the corners of a Z shape so the Z in this case is pretty clear and easy to see with the 60 degree angles that are the same in the inside corners of the Z. Now there are other alternate angles on this diagram as well this angle here and this angle here are the same. If this one's 120, this one's 120 as well. Now the Z in this case is a bit more stretched out. It's more like a back to front zigzag than a Z, but it still counts. These are still described as alternate angles. Okay, now there are other angles in this diagram that are also 120 degrees. This angle down here, for example, CFE is also 120 degrees. Now these angles aren't alternate, because they're not in the corners of a Z shape, but we do want to be able to say that they're the same. Now because they're in the same bottom right position compared to the point, so they are in the corresponding position around the point, we would describe DGF and CFE as corresponding angles. Now you can recognize corresponding angles because corresponding angles make an F shape. Okay, and the angles underneath the crossbars of the F are the angles that are corresponding and are the same size. So in this example, uh, DGF and CFE are corresponding angles. Now there are lots of other corresponding angles on this diagram as well. Take uh, AGB, AGF sorry, and BFE. These angles are both 60. Now the F shape in this case is back to front, but it still counts. Okay, take this angle up here, HDD uh, and GFC, they are both 60 as well. Now this F shape is upside down, but it still counts. They're still described as corresponding angles. Okay, now sometimes we want to make use of the fact that the angles that we, uh, the two angles, the acute angle and the, the obtuse angle that are made, add up to 180 degrees. So if CFG is 60, FGD is 120, they add up to 180. Now what can we say, because they're not angles on a straight line and they're not angles in a triangle, so we need another reason to say why they add up to 180 degrees. Um, and the reason we use is that they are described as co-interior angles. Now co-interior angles are nice and easy to recognize because co-interior angles make a C shape, and C is the first letter of co-interior. I know it's the first letter of corresponding as well which is a little bit confusing but C is the first letter of co-interior so co-interior angles add up to 180. The C shape in this diagram is nice and straightforward to spot 
We also have co-interior angles over this side of the diagram as well, where the C shape would be backwards. Okay, so it's really important that you can recognize alternate and corresponding and co-interior angles. So alternate angles that are equal and make a Z shape, corresponding angles that are equal and make an F shape, and co-interior angles that add to 180 and make a C shape. So like I said, it's really important you can spot these. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video for a few moments and see if you can identify which of these diagrams are showing alternate angles, which are showing corresponding, and which are showing co-interior. Okay, great. So in the first diagram here, hopefully you spotted the upside down back to front F, which makes the green angles corresponding. In the second diagram, there's a nice clear cut Z shape, which makes the yellow angles alternate. In with the blue angles, we have a back to front C, so these angles are co-interior. Here the parallel lines are running vertically, so the F shape is on its side, but the grey angles are corresponding. Here they're on alternate sides of the transversal line, so you get a stretched out zigzag, but that makes those alternate. And lastly the orange angles, well, it's a back to front F, so those are corresponding. Okay, great. Right, now let's put these reasons to use in our geometric arguments. So here's our first example then. So AF and BCD are parallel lines. AFB is 38 degrees and BEC is 90 degrees. So all of that information in the first two lines is recorded on the diagram. Work out the size of the angle labelled X and give reasons for each step of your working. Okay, well let's bring in all the geometric reasons we might need from the front of the revision card as well as the parallel lines ones from the back. And as always with geometric reasoning we need to work in two phases. We need to start working on the diagram and then afterwards write out our reasons. So we're trying to work from the angles that we know over here, maybe picking up some angles in the triangle until we can tell what angle X is. So. Let's see if we can apply any of these new parallel line rules to start with. So hopefully you can spot a Z shape for some alternate angles between AFB and FBC. Okay, so this angle here in the corner of the Z is 38. Now we've picked up two angles inside this triangle and we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we've got a little bit of calculation to do. We need to add 90 and 38 to get 128. We then need to take 128 away from 180, but that leaves us with this third angle in the triangle being 52. Okay, now focusing on, on this corner of the diagram, we can see that we've got a straight line. We've got two angles on a straight line, so they add to 180. So one last calculation, 180 take away 52 gives us 128. So X is 128. Great, so that's the first phase complete. That's probably half of the marks for finding out the size of angle X. Now let's get the rest of the marks by writing out some reasons step by step. Okay, so firstly we got this angle here, angle FBC was 38 degrees. Then write the word because and underline it. Now what reason did we use there? It was alternate angles. So copy this out exactly, alternate angles are equal. Okay. Then we found this angle over here, so that's BCE, 52 degrees, write the word because, underline it, and that time we used the fact that angles in a triangle add to 180. Lastly, we worked out the size of angle X was 128, and that was using angles on a straight line, also add to 180 degrees. Great. Okay, let's take a look at a second example. So, PWV and QRSU are parallel straight lines. PWX is 119 and RW and RS are equal. So again, all the information from the question is also shown on the diagram if you know how to read it. Then work out the size of the angle labeled Y. So, let's bring in the reasons again and let's start work on the diagram. So we only know one angle this time, so starting point 
should probably be trying to find another angle that is the same size as that 119 degree angle. Okay. Um, now, thinking about the shapes we've been looking at in this video, hopefully what you can spot here is a upside down back to front F shape, which makes this angle down here QRW corresponding with PWX. So QRW is 119 degrees as well. Okay, so now we've got down to the other parallel line. Can we get inside the triangle? Well, here, focusing on this part of the diagram, we seem to have angles on a straight line. So if we do 180 take away 119, we can find that the angle inside the triangle is 61 degrees. Now we're trying to work our way over towards Y. We've got one of the angles in the triangle. So it's time to ask the question, what sort of triangle is it? Well, it's got two equal lines and two equal angles. So it's an isosceles triangle. So we must be using, well, probably these two facts together, right? The fact that base angles in the isosceles triangle are equal and the fact that angles in a triangle add to 180. Now, it's the base angles, the angles at the ends of the equal lines that are equal in size. So neither of these angles is equal to 61, but they are equal to each other. So if we use the fact that the angles add up to 180, by doing 180 take away 61, that leaves us with 119 degrees to share equally between these two equal angles. Now 119 divided by 2 is actually 59.5, so both of these angles here are 59.5 degrees. Okay, last step. Uh, hopefully this is easy to spot. The angle we're looking for, Y, and the angle we've just worked out, they form an X shape with two straight lines crossing so they are vertically opposite angles and so y is also 59.5 degrees okay let's string our reasons together then so we started off with qrw that was 119 we used corresponding angles then we worked out uh, wrs was 61 and that was using angles on a straight line adding to 180 degrees. Then the big one, we worked out RSW was 59.5 degrees. And we had to use two things for that. We had to use the fact that the angles in the triangle added up to 180. And then we had to use the fact that the angles were equal. So first of all, we used angles in a triangle add to 180. Then we used base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. Finally, angle Y, 59.5 degrees and that was because vertically opposite angles are equal. Great, so remember when you're working out these, uh, when you're solving these geometric argument problems, your geometric reasoning really ought to look almost exactly the same as this. Angles because reason, angle because reason, angle because reason, all the way. Okay, let's look at one final example to do with bearings. Okay, so the bearing of D from C is 079 degrees what's the bearing of C from D okay so bring in the reasons now you should remember that bearings are measured clockwise from north okay so let's see if we can draw to start with D on a bearing of 079 degrees from C so let's draw C put in a north line then we need a 79 degree angle over to D put in a north line now uh, now, the bearing we, we're trying to find of C from D, well, we have to go clockwise from north, so actually that will be this reflex angle here uh, is what we need to work out. Now, how can we apply some of the angle reasoning? Well, these two north lines, of course, are custom-built parallel lines. And what we can spot in our diagram then is, on its side, a C shape making this angle and this angle co-interior. Okay, so if we do 180 take away 79, we can find out that the angle here is 101. Then we need to spot that we're dealing with angles at a point, so 360 take away 101, and that will leave us with 259 degrees. So the bearing of C from D, the clockwise angle that we have to turn at D to be pointing towards C, is 259 degrees.